everybody, welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Sally. I am here in Sam's flat today. Sam, of course, is behind the camera creating movie magic. We've got the lovely Nikki as well, taking beautiful photos for us too. And we're here to bring you a wonderful recipe. We've been chucked out of the Crumbs and Doilies bakeries again because they're too busy, which is actually fabulous news. <laughs> and of course, our cr Cupcake Gemma studio is not yet ready. It is well on its way. We've got designs locked in. We've got floor being fitted, it is super exciting. If you want to get kind of first look access, then join us over on our Bake Club for that, as well as downloadable PDF versions of every recipe that we're doing here on YouTube. Plus you get to chat to us, which is super duper fun. So head to patreon.com forward slash cupcake Gemma. And thanks to all of you that have already joined us. And thanks to you guys for watching our videos. We absolutely love being here every Thursday. We love baking with you. So make sure you keep on liking our videos, sharing them with your friends, friends and family, and of course subscribing. If you haven't subscribed then, what are you doing? It's literally here. Just click the subscribe button, and if you click the little bell next to it, you'll get a notification every time we upload a video, like this video. And what is this video? It is for a Battenberg, which is one of my favorite things to look at and to eat. They are so, so sweet. In fact, I didn't actually know all that much about them, it turns out, because I just assumed they were British because you get them everywhere here in England, but then I realized that Battenberg doesn't sound very British. Obviously, it's from Germany, so thank you, Germany. We thank you big time for all the amazing treats that you guys give us. Um, so this is basically an almond sponge split into four. It's kind of like a checkerboard looking thing. We're gonna glue it together with apricot jam and then we're gonna decorate it with our own handmade marzipan. It's really, really delicious. It's quite kind of Eastery vibes too and Easter's coming up. So if you wanna make something a bit different this year, then maybe give this a go. Right, should we get on and do this? I think so. So the first thing we're going to do is make our Battenberg cake. And we're going to do that in our mixer. And we're going to start off where most cakes start, and that is with butter and sugar. So I've got 175 grams of super soft butter here. Um, and it's unsalted, as per usual. And we're going to pop that into the mixer, along with 175 grams of caster sugar. And then we're going to turn our mixer on to a medium speed, and we're going to get it whipping for about three to four minutes until it is lovely, smooth, and whippy. All right, next up are the eggs. Now I've got three little eggs here, which I'm going to add one at a time, beating really well between each addition. So once your eggs, butter and sugar have had a nice whip around, it's looking lovely and fluffy in there, it's time to add the dry ingredients. Starting with self-raising flour. So we've got 140 grams, which I'm just gonna chuck straight into the bowl. And then we're also gonna add some almonds. So we've got ground almonds here, it might be called almond flour where you are. And I've got 50 grams of this. Now I love this in cakes because it kind of adds moisture to it, which sounds really weird because it's a dry ingredient, but the almonds have got lots of oils in it. And I just, I love it. I love squishy, squishy almond brownies and cakes. So 50 grams are going in, and then finally, even though I've got self-raising flour, I am going to add half a teaspoon of baking powder, turn the mixer on to the lowest speed, and just fold it together until it's just come together. So that's our basic batter made, and now we need to divide it by two because half of it's going to be pink. So what we're going to do first is just scrape all the batter from our paddle. And then I've got a bowl here and my scale. So I'm gonna pop my bowl on, we'll set it to zero, and then we're gonna weigh our batter. Then divide it by two and scoop out half of it and put that into a separate bowl. So now we are ready to prepare our two separate sponges. Now the first one's nice and easy. We're gonna leave it batter colored, white, yellow, whatever it is. And we're gonna add some almond extract. So I've just got the almond extract here. You can pretty much get this in all supermarkets. And we're gonna go for half a teaspoon. And we're gonna stir that through until it's fully combined. And to this one, instead of almond extract, we're gonna add vanilla extract. I've gotta get vanilla in every bag. <laughs> so I've got, again, half a teaspoon going in here. And you can get vanilla in superstores too, but why do that when you head to cupcakegemma.com and get yourself some of the very vanilla that we use at the Crumbs and Doilies Bakery? Got it in, didn't I? <laughs> as well as the vanilla, we need to make this one pink. So the way I'm gonna do this is to take a little bit of the batter out, just about this much, and I'm gonna put it in a separate bowl here. 
and I'm going to add my pink food colouring to it just so that I can really beat this into it without beating out too much air. And as usual, I'd always recommend using a kind of concentrated food colouring, whether that's a paste or like this one, which is an oil-based one. And I actually really love this. I've been kind of playing with colours recently, and this is by Colour Mel. And I mean, just look at this colour. Like, it's really hard to get a really beautiful pink colour these days. <laughs> well, not these days, in the old days, but I love this one. So anyway, that being said, now all we need to do is pop our pink batter into our not pink batter and very gently fold it through. And once the colour has mixed through completely, you've not got any kind of white batter streaks remaining in there, it is all ready. So let's talk about the tin. Now I have got this super cute, snazzy little Battenberg tin here, which just makes life so much easier. Because otherwise what you'd probably need to do is bake two separate cakes, one in each colour, which means you're probably gonna need double the amount of batter which you could make two Battenbergs, why the hell not? But these are really easy to get hold of. They're all over the internet and I'd recommend getting one if you wanna make this. So let's prepare this tin. So you need to grease it. I'm gonna use my Release a Cake Spray here, which you can get from cupcakegemma.com as well. It is just like an absolute time saver, life saver, love it. We're gonna give it a good spray and then I'm gonna divide my batter evenly between our four sections, two pink and two white. So I've just leveled these out with a little palette knife, but you could use a regular knife or the back of a spoon. They're ready to go in the oven, which is preheated to 170 degrees C, and they're gonna go in for kind of 20 to 25 minutes. I know that mine take 24 minutes, so maybe pop them in, give them a test with a skewer to make sure that they're fully baked, and then we'll leave it to cool down. Okie doke, so whilst our Battenberg sponges are baking away in the oven, come back over here, we got work to do. It is time to make our marzipan. Now, of course, if you just wanna buy some marzipan, then I ain't judging nobody. But making it yourself is actually really easy and I think it tastes a lot nicer as well. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. We've made this here before on the channel, but I'm making it slightly differently this time and I'll explain that in a little bit. But we're gonna start off by adding 150 grams of ground almonds and 180 grams of icing sugar into our food processor. We're just gonna blitz that up for about 20 to 30 seconds and then we're gonna sift it all out so that we get rid of any big lumps of the nuts and then we're gonna pop it all back into the food processor. So now this is all nice and smooth and fine, which is gonna give us a much smoother and finer marzipan. Now it is time to bind it all together, which we're gonna do with some egg. Now we've got egg white here, and I've actually got pasteurized egg white, which you can really easily get now um, in most supermarkets here in the UK. Um, but if you don't, have it. You can do a little trick here. Um, you are going to need to put some egg white on your bain-marie with a little bit of custard sugar and just cook it out. And this is how we've made marzipan on the channel before, so I will drop a link to that video in the description box below with a point in the video to take you straight to that part. So if you can't find the pasteurized egg white then that's what you're gonna do. Anyway, we're gonna add this into our almond and icing sugar mixture, along with half a teaspoon of the almond extract, and we're gonna turn the food processor on and just keep it mixing until it starts to come together as a dough. So let's take this out, and it's looking good, looking nice and sticky. We now just need to turn it onto our surface and use our hands to knead it together into a nice smooth dough. Now if you find that your marzipan mixture is just super duper sticky, it's sticking to your hands and the surface and it's not coming together, add a little bit more almonds, just sift them to get rid of those lumps and once it's done you'll have a really gorgeous marzipan, it's really really smooth, mm, beautiful. Now what you do need to do is make sure that it stays covered because it does dry out pretty easily. So I've got some cling wrap here, I'm just going to wrap it on up nice and tight. And now all we have to do is wait for the amazing smelling cake to bake and cool down and then we can start assembling into the Battenberg. What's for lunch, Sam? Something good. Mm -hmm. 
Alrighty, so the cakes have cooled down completely and I've taken them out of the tin and as you can see, I've trimmed the tops of them off, which I actually did in the tin just because it was nice and easy to get it really nice and level and they're all even. But before we assemble, if you want to spend a little of time just kind of evening these out just to make sure that they are all square and even, then by all means do. What I like to do is just kind of like turn each of them round and make sure that it's always kind of nice and flush if that makes sense. So just turning each piece around on itself, just making sure that it's level. So now we can get assembling. Now I'm going to be doing it on this little board here, um, but you can do it on any kind of plate you want because we're going to be decorating each side one at a time. So a plate would do just fine. So the first thing we need to do is stick it all together with some apricot jam. Now this one is pretty runny and sticky, but if yours is a bit firmer, then just pop it in the microwave just to kind of loosen it a bit. And I also took out some of the really big chunks of apricot because as delicious as they may be, they're gonna be a bit pesky when we wanna stick this and make it look neat. So the first thing we wanna do is grab one of the, well, I'm gonna go with one of the pink pieces and I'm gonna spread apricot jam, ooh, it's gonna get sticky, across the top and one of the sides. Next up, we're gonna grab a white piece and stick it onto the pink. Looking pretty good already. So now what we're gonna do is add apricot jam to the top of this piece, and then we're gonna keep on going until we've stuck all four pieces together. So now that we have our Battenberg starting to take shape, it is time to move on to the marzipan. So I'm grabbing back my marzipan here, and we're not gonna roll all of this out and try and cover the cake in one piece, because particularly if you've made your marzipan, it can be a little bit kind of drier, and it can have a tendency to kind of crack. So I'm just cutting a little bit off at a time, keep the other bit wrapped up, and then we're gonna grab a rolling pin and some icing sugar. I'm gonna use the icing sugar to dust the surface and then roll out your marzipan, hopefully in the shape of one of your sides of your Battenberg. So once you, I mean, to be honest, let's just pick this up and test it. There we go, perfect. <laughs> That's the best way of seeing if this works. So now what we're going to do is start off by trimming just the very edge of the marzipan, like this. And now grab back your apricot jam. And we're gonna spread that onto one side of our Battenberg. Now, you don't want too much apricot jam on the outside. This is purely just to kind of stick the marzipan on with. So let's do that. So pick up your marzipan. The bottom side is gonna go flush with the bottom of the cake. Just pat it on to stick. And now, what I'm gonna actually do is flip this, pow, <laughs> just like that, with no sound effects and all. <laughs> and now before we marzipan any of the rest of the cake, I've got a knife here and I'm gonna trim off any excess bits of marzipan. And we can actually just re-roll that, which is fabulous. If it's got loads of crumb or apricot jam in, then probably discard it. But there we go, one side complete. And now we're gonna do the exact same thing for the remaining three sides of our Battenberg. So we're gonna roll out the marzipan with some icing sugar, and then we're gonna apricot jam the side of the cake. We'll stick the marzipan on, then we'll flip it over and trim off the excess. looking pretty cool, but just wait, have a look at this. Is it cute? I think it's cute. I love it. And it looks like it would be really annoyingly difficult to make. Maybe some of you watching this are saying, yeah, that did look annoyingly difficult to make, but hopefully most of you are saying, hmm, actually, Sally, I think I'll give this a go. And I think you should because it's adorable. And also, this sponge, I can tell, is gonna have a really lovely kind of texture to it because of those almonds. 
There's only one way to find out. Mmm. So, so delicious. And not too almondy. That was the perfect amount of almond extract. Mmm. And the kind of slight tanginess you get from the apricot jam. It's really moist. The marzipan is a perfect consistency, which is why I always think you should make your own if you can. So have a fabulous time baking this. I just think you should make it just because it looks so cute and just looking at it is going to make you really happy. But also eat it, because it's really delicious. Promise you, everyone is going to love it. Um, great. Well, have a great time. And let us know how you get on over on Instagram. Use the tag hashtag Cupcake Gemma so we can see and share your photos. Follow us too at Cupcake Gemma and at Crumbs and Doidies so you can see all the cakey goodness. And now, look. I'm not making a promise, but Gemma is going to be back, hopefully next week, with those jammy jammy donuts. And I know this because I was in the bakery yesterday when she was practicing a said jammy jammy donuts, and they were uh, amazing, like so good. Who knew? I mean, we all knew because she's not just the cupcake queen, she is the donut queen as well. So you guys are going to have those in your bellies ever so soon, I promise you. Um, so come and hang out with us over on Bake Club for all the kind of behind the scenes actions as well. I know Nikki was in the kitchen the other day with her camera getting some awesome content for there. So come and join us there. If not, we'll see you here next Thursday at 4pm in England. Unless you're somewhere else and I don't really know what time it will be, but we'll see you then. Bye. Ooh. <laughs>